usually the best way to clear up a problem is to catch it before it makes a mess. Now the same thing is true for sound. So what can we do to improve our sound before and during the shoot? Let's say we're filming a scene in a school playground. Now for the wide shot, we'll need 50 extras, all in costume, all with their limited working hours. Now after the wide shots, we can schedule most of the extras to go home and just have the remaining 10 in the background of the close-ups. But that's only because we've already decided to use the sound of a much busier playground. That is what sells the effect. Without that sound, we'd need all 50 of those extras for the entire scene, which would be both expensive and a real hassle to organize. No one really has enough money to make their films. Anything we can do to squish those expensive things into as few shooting days as possible is a good thing. Have you ever noticed the difference between watching sports on TV and sports in movies? Well, there's a lot of differences, but one of them is the sound. On TV, all you can hear is the crowd and the commentators. Whereas in a movie, say Coach Carter, we get the sound of the basketball hitting the ground. And we get the sound of their shoes squeaking against the court. These are really important sounds for the experience of playing basketball. I'll embed a clip on the blog post so you can see what I mean. Links below. Now, usually I'd be adding a lot of sound effects to an episode like this for demonstrational purposes. But this week, I think we need to learn to imagine those sound effects because scripts, well, scripts are pretty quiet and they don't usually tell you whether there should be birds tweeting in the background or really heavy traffic. That's your decision. Now, imagine for a second that we're working on a post-apocalyptic film. I quite like the idea of having a dog barking off in the distance. Cliche, but who cares? I also quite like the idea of paper rustling, just on the ground, kind of, you know, moving in the wind and making a little sound. So that would then influence our production design, because we have to have someone go out there and put some paper on the ground in the background of our shots. Or maybe we decide that we're going to shoot at a motorway, a big highway, because we know that that's somewhere where the audience would expect to be loud, but in this world, it's actually eerily quiet. So that way we're communicating to the audience through sound and we're getting to know more about this world. We're immersing the audience in this world that we've created. Slating seems unnecessary these days. A lot of people are just using the simple clap and to be honest, I've never really even bothered with that because the software can sync it up automatically. But there has been a problem I've been running into. Firstly, sometimes it can be really hard to match up the two clips, the audio and the video could be matched up with any of the six video files you've got, which is a waste of time. And then also, sometimes it gets it wrong. You guys have been letting me know in the comments when my audio is out of sync and there's no way of really checking and knowing for sure. So with a slate, you hold up to the camera and make sure that you're within range of the microphone. In this case, we're using the Rode VideoMic Pro. The audio hits record, then the camera hits record, and then the slate person shouts out, scene three, shot four, take two. And that way, when you're in post, the first thing you hear when you open up the audio file is exactly which shot you need to get. And then by looking at the video file, again, the first frame is the exactly the same information. So you can match them up really, really quickly. And that does save a lot of time. Now, when it comes to wireless lavaliers, here I'm using the Rode Link, which is a wireless transmitter in that it has a small microphone here and the transmitter which sends the signal from me to my camera or my audio recorder all the way over there. And the nice thing about this is it can be a really wide shot like this and we don't need to have a microphone ruining the shot by being in the frame. The microphone's here, hidden, no one even knows. And then the other thing is that I can be moving around a lot in a very tight space here. We couldn't have a boom pole guy here. We couldn't have anyone standing behind me doing the boom. So we can do it in this small space and it still works fine. I can move around as much as I want. The mic will be staying with me. But even if you are using a shotgun mic like this one, then you can still have the lavalier as a backup in case something happened like this sound, which we can get rid of. This sound, which we can get rid of by switching to the lav. Now, just generally on a lot of professional film sets, they've started doing this where you give each character a lavalier just in case and just to give yourself more options in post-production. Now, if you're looking for a way to train your brain when it comes to sound, you should try this. Here I watched a clip from one of my favorite films and kept pausing it to write down every single sound I heard, from footsteps to the smashing of glass. Wearing headphones really helps. But the trick I found really helpful was to find a random clip from a film and watch it with the sound off and write down every single sound that I expected to hear. Now, here's my list. Then I watched it again with the sound on and this was my list. It was really interesting to see the things that they included that I never thought of. Now, the cool thing is that for these big budget movies, we know that behind every single one of these sounds, there was a person making a decision on whether to include that sound or not, carefully tweaking the volume and the timing until it's barely noticeable. 
Now, although plenty of scenes in good films will have shorter lists than these, it makes me think about how long are these sound lists in the films that I've made. I really think we should give sound more attention from the earliest stages of production, because just using dialogue and music is really not using sound to its full potential. When I say that I watched a great film last night, what I really mean is that I watched and listened to a great film last night. There are two senses at work, so maybe that's why everyone keeps saying that audio is 50% of your film. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSR Guide, and I'll see you next week.